Hi folks, it's time to test a new uh, borax separator paper that uh, that I made in the last video. And uh, before I do that though, I wanted to uh, just say that one of my concerns about creating a, a better separator is that we may end up separating the titanium dioxide too much from the uh, carbon that it needs uh, to uh, work. Uh, and if that happens, that just means that we'll have to add some uh, graphite to the titanium dioxide side of the battery too, which uh, we can do because I've already tried that and I know that it works already. You can actually just mix the two half and half and then put it on both sides of the battery and uh, it'll work. But we, we want to create the, the best battery as possible, so we want to find the best solution to, to the problem. So uh, the purpose of this test is just to see if our borax separator will improve what we've already uh, got and uh, if it does that's great and if it makes it worse then we'll try adding some graphite to the titanium and run the test again so let's get going here <coughs> and see what we got mix this up good because the titanium dioxide is not soluble in water and it just settles out Alright, here we go, a couple of drops on there, alright, that's a separator. This may also take a little bit of time to, uh, to stabilize because we've got the uh, we've got the linking agent there it's got to get hooked up with both sides of the battery okay there's our microspheres on the carbon I've also added a piece of uh, copper tape to the back of the uh, graph oil here as a current collector. Makes the graph oil a little easier to handle and not so delicate. <laughs> All right, let's see what kind of volts we got here. We're on the 2000 milliamp or milliwatt, milli volt setting. And we have a hundred and What's that? 7.4 and 0.5. So yeah, it's pretty stable right there off the bat. All right. So that's a good indication. At least it didn't jump around a lot. All right. Here goes our, our milliamps. We're on the 200 milliamp setting. And we have about 5.8. So that's not nearly as good. We've had 26 as a, our record. But that could change too. Let's uh, let it recharge here for a second and then, uh, and then test it again. Let's see how our recharge is going. We're back up to 90 and climbing pretty fast. 91. 2. Three and five, nine, six. You know, I spend a lot of time watching the meter, but it's important to see the. Uh, See how well the self charge goes too. And it's still going up. We were at uh, what 107.5, I think. 107. And there's one volt. It's still climbing. 
slowing down now, but that's typical. Two. Looks like it's actually climbing a little bit faster right now. Maybe stabilizing some more. There's 104. So it looks like it's going to make it back to 107. And we've seen it go even higher on the recharge before, too. So, But you can usually tell by the speed of the recharge about how high it's going to go. So we're just about full charge now. We might as well wait and see if it goes a little higher. There's our 107. our initial 107.5 and we're going a little higher and it's still it looks like it'll go probably to about 10 about 110 probably I'm guessing but it's already uh, above where we were let's see how our amps do on the discharge this time Oh, much better. We we'll see we're at 12.5, so the cell is uh, stabilizing and linking up. All right, let's see how our charge is going. We're already back up to 0.97, and it's climbing even faster than it was last time. one volt Slowing down. There's 06. It's still climbing though. Looks like it gets its second breath there. Close to the end, there's 107. There's our initial 107.5 we started with. There's 108. So we haven't lost anything so far. We've gained. Let's take it back to 109 and then discharge it again and see what we'll get. There's 109. Now let's go ahead and take it to 110 and discharge it. Fifteen. It went up again, and we're getting a slower drop on the stuff too. So the battery's improving. It's uh, 
It's all linking up in there, looks like. So it looks like we haven't separated the, uh, the titanium from the carbon too far yet. And I think for the next experiment, I think I will put some uh, graphite into titanium dioxide and then we'll try it again and see if we can... Because we're, we're not... Uh, not as we had uh, 26 milliamps before, and I think the battery size was, or the copper or the graphite plate was a little smaller than. So. Anyway, it looks like the uh, borax uh, separator uh, works pretty good. Let's take it apart and see how much kind of bleed through we got here. We were getting a lot of. Oh, look at how clean that is. See, we were getting a lot of uh, bleed through with the old separator, and now that's that's clean. There's just titanium dioxide and our, the TSP on that side, and this side. You see, that's nice. Although, look what's happening here. We were, I'm getting some. Uh, that that may be mostly paper, or it may be uh, the thin film on the separator. I'm not sure what's going on there but we're not we're not getting any uh, uh, graphite bleeding through to the negative uh, anode so that's good all right so I think this was a success I'll see you next time oh before I go I just wanted to clarify something uh, the purpose of the separator is not really to keep the carbon from uh, bleeding through to the other side and that's okay we want to go to an all-carbon battery anyway but uh, if it's to keep the uh, acids and alkalins uh, uh, from mixing uh, together too easy uh, we can control that uh, that ions moving back and forth through the separator then we can control the reaction better so we're, we're basically trying to separate the, the half cells better in the battery so I just wanted to clarify that in case anybody uh, misunderstood I was trying to keep carbon from uh, penetrating uh, through the carbon is not the is not the point all right I'll talk to you later